there and welcome to Space Lab. My name is Leo and in this video I'm going to help you get up and running quickly with this plugin. This video is part of a larger ongoing series about Space Lab and 3D audio production, so if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can stay up to date with the latest news, tips and tricks. Now the first thing to know about Space Lab is that it works in two modes, classic mode and object mode. In classic mode, you get a sophisticated high-end reverb plugin that you can use in your DAW just like any other reverb. However, unlike most reverbs, Space Lab supports a ton of different input and output formats going from mono all the way up to 256 channel audio options. If you've worked with 3D audio before, then you know that there are a lot of formats and options with 3D audio and they're all included here. Second, we have object mode. Here you get the same sophisticated reverb from classic mode with the object-based panning that's commonly used in 3D audio mixing. If you have Spacelab Ignition, each instance of the plugin gets you 24 objects that you can move around freely in three-dimensional space. If you have Spacelab Interstellar, each instance gets you a whopping 256 objects that you can move around. For now, let's just start in classic mode with a simple stereo in stereo out configuration so you can hear this reverb in all its glory. We'll use it on a session with some drums. To use Space Lab as a reverb, you can treat it just like any other reverb plugin. Let's start by instantiating Space Lab on any channel where you send your audio effects to be processed, like a bus or FX channel. Next, let's switch Space Lab to Classic Mode. You can do this by going to the Reverb section of the plugin and selecting Classic from the Mode drop menu. Switching to Classic Mode will bring up a prompt asking if you're sure you want to do this. Let's go ahead and click Yes. And finally, let's switch the dry signal off completely so that we're only hearing the wet output of this reverb. This is typically how send and return effects are used in things like reverbs, and Space Lab is no different. Now you can send any of your audio tracks to Space Lab's reverb using the send control of that track. To get going with Space Lab's object mode, you'll need to understand some basic concepts and also our nifty routing plugin called Space Lab Beam. Let's get started with the basic concepts first. When working in object mode, the main thing to understand is that all of your incoming audio is treated as discrete objects in three dimensional space. Think of this as if you're positioning musicians, instruments, or any other sound objects in a virtual room. Now, sound objects generate well, sound, and that sound bounces off the walls in this virtual room, causing the room to reverberate. What's cool is that you, as the listener, are also inside this virtual room, and you can move yourself around the room freely as if you were walking around a real room with real musicians and instruments being played. We'll cover all of this in an in-depth tutorial, but the big takeaway here is that you're dealing with objects in a three-dimensional room rather than tracks on a mixing console. You design the virtual room however you like, and you place the objects where you want in that room. Space Lab then renders the sound in real time in your desired output format. This can be mono or stereo or go all the way up to the latest 3D audio formats with high channel counts like 7.1.4 and beyond. To simplify getting audio into Space Lab, we've created a special plugin called Space Lab Beam. Beam is installed together with the rest of Space Lab, and like Scotty, it beams the signals from your audio tracks into Space Lab for processing in 3D. To use Beam, just instantiate it on any track in your session, and that track is instantly sent to Space Lab without you having to deal with any complicated routing. Okay, so let's go over this step by step. So in our demo session from the previous example, we'll need to change Space Lab to object mode. This is done using the same drop menu that we talked about in the previous example. Next, let's instantiate Beam plugins on each track that need to be sent to Space Lab. 
When you instantiate a Beam plugin on a track, you'll notice that that track is no longer sent to your DAW's mixing bus. All that audio is instead diverted to Spacelab. This is what we want. If you need to adjust the loudness level, you can do that using the gain knob in each Beam plugin. There's one more important thing we need to ensure before we get to mixing in 3D. Since all hosts process audio in chunks of samples, we need to make sure that our signals flow from the Beam plugins to Spacelab in that order. If the DAW gets confused and does this backwards, the connections between Beam plugins and Spacelab will still work, but you will have an unwanted delay between some of the tracks, which is not what we want. So, to make sure that the timing problem doesn't happen, we'll force the host to process all the tracks with Beam plugins first before sending things off to Spacelab. We'll do this by routing the tracks with Beam plugins to the track with Spacelab or to create a send in the same direction. In either case, the host will correctly think that the Beam plugins need to be processed first and then sent to Spacelab because of the routing. In our case, we already have sends going from the channel to Spacelab because of the previous example, so we're all set. One last point to mention here. Many DAWs, like Logic for example, try to conserve CPU by suspending plugins that are not receiving an audio input. This can be problematic, so Beam and Interstellar solve this problem by emitting an ultra-low signal at about minus 200 dB. This is not something that you're ever going to hear, but it keeps the plugins active so we don't run into any problems. Next, let's head over to Spacelab and make sure that the dry switch is enabled. As you can see, the sources view with the panner is now accessible, so let's go ahead and click that. On the left side, you'll see a list of all available sources. All objects in Spacelab are organized as sources, and a source can contain one or more objects. Each object is one mono audio stream, so a stereo source has two objects, as we see here. In the middle here, we have the control column with knobs for positioning and other source parameters. And on the right, there's a panner window showing the listener and the sources in the virtual room. We already have one source, so let's create five more sources so that all of the Beam plugins from our session are now represented here in Spacelab. Next, let's open up the configuration window of the first source by clicking on its wheel icon. At the upper right side, select the second entry as the input source. In this menu, the first item is called Spacelab and represents the audio input of the plugin itself, while the other entries are the Beam plugins that are present in your session. Finally, let's select a unique color for this source at the bottom so that we can distinguish it from the other sources. And let's close the configuration window. Let's repeat this for the other sources so that each source has one of the Beam plugins as its input. Now, as you can see, by default, all sources have the same name as the Beam plugins that they are connected to. Of course, you can change the name in the configuration window if you'd like, but let's keep these as is for now. You might have noticed that all of these sources have two objects by the number of meters that they show in the list. That's because our beam plugins are on stereo tracks here in Reaper, and stereo tracks transmit two channels, and that's why we see two objects in each source. Okay, now that we have all of our objects in Spacelab, Let's make some 3D audio over headphones or earbuds. This is called binaural sound, and if you haven't already put on headphones, you should do that now. Trust me, it's worth it. On the reverb view, let's select the 32-channel full sphere speaker layout as the output format and activate the binaural switch. Note that this is the ideal output configuration for binaural listening only. With this configuration, you can listen to objects coming not only from the left or right, but also from behind you, in front of you, above you, or even below you. If you want to listen to any other speaker layout on your headphones, you can of course just select it, and when binaural is on, it will be rendered for your headphone monitoring. Back in the sources view, we are currently in the 3D view mode of the panning window. Here we can look around to see the arrangement of objects by clicking and dragging, or we can zoom in and out using the mouse wheel, or we can shift our view by holding the shift key while we drag the mouse. If you've made a mistake and messed something up, 
just Alt or Option click to revert that thing back to its default state. Now, to position objects in space, we mostly use the top panner and the side panner. This is where we can grab objects and drag them around. So let's hear what it sounds like when we spin the soloed overheads around. We can also move objects around using the position knobs. Okay, so now that we know how to do these things, let's position the remaining objects. We can select a source with all of its objects from the list by clicking on it, and we can select multiple sources by holding shift while we click. Let's head over to the reverb view to adjust the sound of the reverb. You can find the most commonly used parameters at the top of the interface. For example, we can change the size of the room or its complexity or smoothness. Let's give it some modulation and let's make the reverb time a little bit shorter. Spacelab can have literally thousands of parameters depending on how many sources you have. Because of this, and to be able to automate various parameters with one automation curve, Spacelab offers a feature called dynamic automation. With dynamic automation, you first declare which parameters you want to automate, and then these parameters become available in your host software for automation. The easiest way to do this is by alt or option clicking the control belonging to the parameter that you want to automate. Let's go ahead and do this with reverb time. Now let's have a quick look at the Automation tab. And as you can see, the list in the Automation tab just got a new entry, a so-called Lane Group. There's a field that says 1 to 9. A Lane Group can contain several lanes which represent single parameters in the host. In this case, the Lane Group contains 9 lanes because in Spacelab, Reverb Time is a parameter that can be adjusted individually for 9 frequency bands as we can see in the Room Character tab. With the big reverb time knob, you can change all of them simultaneously. Now let's also enable automation for the position of some of our sound sources. For that, we'll have to go to our Sources view. Now we just select the sources we want to move together and Alt-click on one of the position knobs, X, Y, or Z. If we go back to the reverb view and have a look at the automation tab, we can see there is another lane group called L2 with the parameter type of position and three lanes in it. 
10 through 12. These three lanes are for X, Y, and Z. The name L2 for the lane group is not very descriptive, so we can give it a better name. It's good practice to keep the name short as it's shown in the host as well. Now let's see how the parameters became accessible in the host. In the host, we can see the nine bands of reverb time and the X, Y, and Z lanes with the name we gave to the respective lane group. Let's automate the reverb time first. To do that, we'll need to activate latch mode in the DAW. Then we go back to Spacelab and start playback. While playback is running, we move the reverb time knob to record the changes that we want to make. Okay, so let's stop and listen to the playback to verify that everything is working as we expect. Now let's automate the source position. To do that, let's go to the Sources view and select the top panner. Before starting to automate any source parameter using the GUI, we'll need to activate the automation mode for these by clicking the Automate button in the Control column. Now we can see that in the lower left corner, the Select Listener button has disappeared and a drop-down with a small button has become visible. You can use this drop-down to select which parameter to automate. We need to do this to limit the mouse access to those parameters for which dynamic automation has been activated. Right now we have only one source parameter automation lane group, so only one entry can be found in the dropdown. For writing position automation to the host, we have two options. We can use either the knobs in the control column or actually drag the objects around. Let's spin the kick. Now again, let's check if the automation was recorded correctly. And that's it for this Jumpstart video. To learn more about the powerful features of Spacelab, please have a look at our other in-depth tutorials. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.